Well, hey, welcome back to a video pretty much welcoming me back. Apparently, according to the YouTube studio, so it must be correct, it's been a little over three and a half years since I last uploaded my last video. Well, that's if you don't include the one I posted about three weeks ago, although that was mostly me just making sure that I still had it and making sure that you guys are still here. And to everyone who has stuck around for those three and a half years, thank you very much. Although it is a bit strange being in front of the camera again, although it is still a lot of fun. Even in that last video that I posted, it was a lot of fun being able to talk about fountain pens and it has been a lot of fun just using all my fountain pens recently, getting ready to make more videos. And that's the plan. I've got about 10 to 15 new pens ready and lined up to go. So hopefully the plan, if you guys are all aboard for it, is for to go ahead and review it just like I used to do. Although with that said, I don't think I can just come back and pretend that the last three and a half years of absence just didn't happen. So let me take five seconds to go ahead and explain, well, why haven't there been videos for three and a half years? And straight out of the gate, the big overarching reason isn't all that interesting. And it mostly comes down to the fact that for most of that time, I just didn't have a space which I could film in and make the sort of videos that I like to make. You know, since 2019, I've lived in six different places and only two of them have been suitable to make these types of videos in. That being the spare room in my old, old, old place and this place. And even in this place, I've had to change filming location twice just because I wasn't happy with the amount of echo that was in my previous video. And even in this room, I've had to add nine acoustic panels that are filled with fiberglass insulation just to cut down on the amount of echo that was finding its way into the audio track. And at least to me, you know, I don't know how much it comes across on your end, but to me, the video and the audio component is something that I've tried to maintain at least a consistent approach with over the many years that I've been doing these videos. So I've always tried to be consistent having a static, you know, talking to camera shot with minimal echo, natural to warm lighting, and a nice backdrop, which hopefully looks the part here. Plus to a lesser extent, I need a space to do basic B-roll shots, although doing that is not as difficult as it is to have a space like this to do talking to headshots. And I also need a space to be able to do the writing samples, although that too, it's very easy to do that in a small space with very basic lighting. And obviously, if you're familiar with my videos, I'll obviously take the talking to camera shots and the B-roll and I'll splice that all in and then I'll add the writing sample at the end as well as doing close-up shots of the nib and the pen and the grip. I'm sure you guys are familiar with my style of video. It's how I've always tried to do it. And I can do that here, and I could do that at my old, old, old place, but everything in between, you know, it was difficult. You know, for a while I had my workshop when I moved house, and I used that as a backdrop for a while, and whilst I liked it initially, after a while, I don't know, it just didn't fit the aesthetic of my video. It may not matter a whole lot to you, but it certainly mattered to me. Plus, the echo in that workshop was, I mean, it was pretty awful. I then built in a small studio at one end of the workshop, just trying to go for a very basic backdrop, you know, something very generic. And whilst I think it looked okay on camera, trying to film that was, I mean, it was almost impossible. The lighting was worse in that side of the workshop. The echo was worse. And I was only about half a meter away from the camera when I was talking. So it was very difficult to get everything in shot. Eventually though, I had to fill in that space and that space now no longer exists. Now the first apartment that I moved to after that was right next to a train station and trying to fill in that space was almost impossible. The apartment that I moved to after that was completely tiled and it was just an echoey mess. Now I did have plans to try and fix up that space and turn the living room into a filming studio. But I moved there as COVID got really bad and unfortunately all those plans, I mean, just got put on the back burner. Now after that, I then moved to a one bedroom apartment, which thankfully was carpeted. So whilst echo wasn't an issue, space unfortunately was. You know, it was a small one bedroom apartment, which I was sharing with my girlfriend at the time. And I mean, it was a tiny room and into that room we had to put two desks, a bookshelf, a TV, a TV stand, a three person couch and a table and a small coffee table. And once everything was in, I mean, there was no space whatsoever to 
to film. You know, just unfortunately, that space was way too small, even for two people. And then later on, I got a dog. So, I mean, any notion of filming, that went out the window. Now, I did try to persevere just for a little bit. You know, I switched up the format of the video, mostly switching to simpler videos that mostly consisted of B-roll of the fountain pen with a bit of close-ups and writing samples spliced in between it. But those aren't really the types of videos that I wanted to make and the feedback that I was getting from those videos was a little bit mixed. So effectively I told myself I just put off making videos until I could get a space which I was happy to make these videos in. And you know, I did plan on making a few, you know, B-roll only videos every now and then just to make sure that you guys knew that I was here still interested in fountain pens. But unfortunately, work in university sort of got in the way and those videos just never happened. Although my love of fountain pens, I mean, that never went anywhere. I love fountain pens, always have. And that's mostly because I like writing, always have, even before I got into fountain pens. And in fact, the reason why I got into fountain pens in the first place is because I wrote so much. You know, I used to go through so many Uniball eye rollable pens and those things would only last I think on the low end, maybe two weeks, and on the high end, about three. And considering that those were about four bucks each, which I guess in the grand scheme of things is not a whole lot, but for me as a high school student, I was about, what, 15? Four bucks for a pen, I mean, that was, that was crazy. Four bucks for a pen that you couldn't even refill. And in fact, if Uniball just made refillable versions of those at the time, I probably would have never gotten into fountain pens at all. But they didn't, so after a while of paying four bucks for a pen again and again and again, eventually I switched over to using fountain pens, which thankfully you can refill. And at the same time, I saved... Well, I didn't save any money, but that's not really the point, is it? Anyway, getting back on topic, once I moved here, filming new fountain pen videos was certainly something that was on my mind, but I couldn't do it instantly because I had to furnish up this place, cut down on the crazy amount of echo that I was getting in most of the rooms, and I also had to do a few other projects, such as building the bookshelf, which was a dream project of mine. Doing all that took quite a few months, but once I did the majority of that, you would probably have expected me to say, and that's when I started filming new fountain pen videos. And the answer is, well, no, it actually took me quite a long time to even get started on doing that. And it only comes down to two reasons. Now, the first reason is whilst I said my love of fountain pens hadn't gone anywhere, and it never did, the way that I used fountain pens had certainly changed over the past few years. And that's, you know, I used to go through using maybe two or three different pens a day pretty much over the past three years until about six months ago. The only pen that I used was the Twisby Ego. I mean, literally for three years, I used basically one fountain pen and I used it all the time, but that was pretty much the only pen that I ever used. I mean, despite its few flaws, which include, you know, the plastic starting to crack, which is starting to happen on my Twisby Eco, I still think that that pen, or at least to me, it is probably the best fountain pen that I've ever used. I mean, hands down. If you could just give me the option of having one fountain pen for the rest of my life, it would be the Twisby Eco. I mean, I did it for three years without complaining, and I could go another 5, 10, 15 years just using that one fountain pen. I mean, whilst the looks aren't exactly on its side, you know, it is a bit quirky, but it has a good nib, it's incredibly comfortable to use, it has a huge ink capacity, and it is reliable. I mean, it is just everything that I want from a good fountain pen. And with that pen, I probably went through three bottles of Parker Quink, a whole bottle of Noodless Black, and a full bottle of Mont Blanc's Permanent Black. I mean, I did a lot of writing with that fountain pen. I mean, it was the only pen that I used and the only pen that I wanted to use. And it probably would have stayed that way, except for the fact that the plunger got stuck. I mean, that's definitely my fault. I forgot to use the silicon to periodically grease up the inside of the cylinder. And as a result, the rubber plunger got stuck at the bottom and it's been stuck that way for the past six months. And I've tried quite a few times to retrieve the plunger, but unfortunately it is stuck in there and it is stuck for good. However, don't feel too bad because it getting stuck, at least in one sense, was probably a good thing because, you know, I could only use it at that point as a dip pen and 
you know, I'm not going to use a Twisby Eco as a dip pen. It really does defeat the purpose. So I then switched over to my Mont Blanc 146, which I was using periodically every now and then, but I wasn't using it as a full-time writer. But once I switched over to it, I mean, I had just forgotten how nice it was to use a different pen. So then I used that for a few weeks. And after a while, I switched over to my Lamy Safari. I used that for a few weeks, which was a lot of fun. You know, I've been really getting into using it. But since I don't have a proper converter for that fountain pen, I was working my way through the cartridges that I owned. I then ran out of cartridges and had to refill it with an eyedropper. Eventually, I got a bit bored of doing that, so I then switched over to my Wingsung 3013, which is a fantastic fountain pen. You know, $5 for a proper vacuumatic fountain pen with an amazing nib. I mean, for just a few weeks when I was constantly using it, I was about to say that it was just as good, if not better, than my Twisby Eco. And it probably would have been, except it very quickly started to develop quite a few cracks and it started to leak everywhere. So I had to get rid of that pen and I switched over to my Parker Sonnet, which is a fountain pen that I hadn't used for a very long time. You know, in fact, it was my first proper fountain pen that I ever got. That was a fountain pen that I just forgot how good it was. So I used that a whole lot. I then got out, I then cleaned up my Nemo Sign Singularity, used that a whole lot, switched over to a Wingsung 3008. I then switched over to my Keiko Edge. That developed quite a few problems, which eventually resulted in the video which I posted a few weeks ago. And I would like to end on that note saying, that's when I made the Keiko Edge video and I uploaded it to YouTube and you know, we'll go from there. Except it would be a little bit of a lie because it actually took quite a few attempts to go through the motions and you know, talk to the camera and edit something that I was happy with. You know, it took about four attempts and the reason is, you know, as much as I like being on camera, talking to you guys about fountain pens, being able to edit the video and upload it, being on camera is not something that comes to me naturally. Hopefully it doesn't come across that way on your end. You know, fingers crossed it doesn't. And if it doesn't, that's just down to the fact that I've edited it in a good enough way that it doesn't come across that way. But me on camera, me being on camera is not something that comes naturally to me. In fact, I go as far to say that naturally I am rubbish in front of the camera. You know, I used to be and I still am in awe of, you know, Stephen, Jason and Chris. You know, those are my OC YouTube inspirations for fountain pens. I am always in awe that they're able to simply turn on the camera and just do a piece to camera, talk about the fountain pen and do it in one video. And most videos, they don't stutter, they don't stammer, and as far as I'm aware, there's no cuts. For me, I cannot do that. In fact, once I use the remote and turn on the video, and I see the red light, and the red light says it's recording, my brain, it just turns to mush. And in fact, it usually takes, oh, I don't know, easily an hour, to spit out 10 minutes of content. Even just to get to this point, it's taking me about, I'd say easily 30, 40 different shots and two cups of tea, just to get to where we are now at page nine on my script. And in fairness to me, I mean, I have always been terrible in front of the camera. As much as I like being able to make these videos, the whole me being on camera bit, that's the weakest link. If it was up to me, I'd just use, I don't know, AI or an actor or something and just get the video clips already pre-done and just edit them up to YouTube. But unfortunately, it's a one-man show, so part of that means that I have to get in front of the camera and talk. And um, I've always been pretty bad on camera. You know, I've been making my own home videos since I was about seven or eight. You know, I've been doing this for a very long time. And I was rubbish back then, even more rubbish. And in fact, back then it was even worse because I was recording video onto tape. And as you guys would know, you'd only have a limited amount of tape and tape was valuable. So I'd spend most of my time just uh, an umming at the camera and my videos, which were supposed to be 20 minutes long, they'd be, oh, I don't know, three or four. Times were tough. 
All this is to say is it took a few attempts to get to a video that I thought was at least somewhat acceptable. Now I do hope you guys enjoyed that previous video. It was certainly a lot of fun putting it together and I was really happy with the end result. So if you guys were happy to watch that video and you were happy with the quality of it, I know I certainly was. So if we're both in agreement, let's just say I got 10 to 15 new fountain pens waiting to get reviewed and I got a few more in the mail. So I guess if everything goes well, I think I'll stick around for a little bit. And once again, I am sorry for being gone for so long, but I'm back and I'm planning on staying here for quite some time. It's great to be back. See you in the next video.